Precisely 86 Fahrenheit when I entered the tub. No matter what I was first on. 84 degrees. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Thank you, Forster. Exactly one minute at noon. Today being Tuesday, he will take the white fish with Reading sauce. Yes, sir. And a rhubarb and gooseberry tart with just a morsel of Cheshire cheese. I'll see to it instantly, sir. Then what happened? The banknotes were tied together on my desk. I turned my back for a second. You turned your back? Gone. The banknotes were gone. Have you any idea what he looked like? Well, he, well, he was dressed like a gentleman. Very well. McBain's. I want every clerk who was on the floor at the time of the robbery to be questioned. Oh, yes, sir. And I shall inform Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Oh, nincompoops. Do you expect me to rely on them? Uh, uh, no, sir. We'll hire our own people. Oh, yes, sir. Mark my words. This is the most dreadful scandal. I want the thief brought to justice before the week is out. Understand? Oh, completely, sir. Oh, completely. Tell me why. 
One minute six. He'll be here on the dot. Tell me, what does Fogg do exactly? We don't really know. Certainly not public employment. I believe he has travelled abroad considerably. He seems well acquainted with the various parts of the world. One thing for certain about Fogg, he'll do tomorrow precisely what he's done today. Mm. Gentlemen, I believe it's six o'clock. Shall we begin? Evening. On Friday last, as you may recall, you woke me at seven minutes past eight. On Sunday, the morning tea was tepid. And this morning, as you will doubtless recall, the bath temperature was not satisfactory. Therefore, after serious consideration, I regret to inform you that you are discharged as of tomorrow morning at nine o'clock precisely. Oh, sir. Some things, Forster, one simply cannot forgive. You will, of course, be given two weeks severance pay. Oh, you're very generous, sir. Don't mention it, Forster. Don't mention it. Jean Passepartout at your service. Yes. Well, what do you want? Sir, I am here to apply for the position of manservant. French? Why? Hmm. Well, we shall see. You've worked as a gentleman's gentleman before? Here are my credentials, monsieur. Single, I trust. I am. Previous employer? Napoleon III. I served him faithfully, monsieur, in the imperial household before the fall of the Second Empire. Hmm. Did you indeed? How I do admire your English monarchy here, monsieur. Long live England. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh... I am not Napoleon III, but one does have certain basic requirements in one's household that... Um... Oh, I know, I know. I want nothing more than to serve a quiet gentleman of strict but temperate habits in peaceful surrounding. I adore the tranquil life. Allow me to ask, um, what time do you make it? It is, monsieur. Precisely ten o'clock. You are in my employ, Passepartout, as of this moment. Oh, merci, monsieur. Thank you. Here's a list of your duties. And by the way, your watch is one minute fast. I flatter myself that I'm well acquainted with the devious workings of the criminal mind. 
If I am to be entrusted with this appointment, uh, I'd certainly be prepared to go to the ends of the earth in order to apprehend this rogue. Brindisi. Yeah. Sir? I'm sending detectives to every major port in Europe and the British Isles. You will be here, Italy. Italy? To keep a constant watch on all passengers who arrive and depart. I, I, I welcome the challenge, sir. I have a working knowledge of the lingo, smattering. Two thousand pounds to the man who brings him in. Two thousand pounds? Oh, well. That'll be all fixed. You can count on me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Disgrace to Queen and Empire. Oh, get over excited. We can get the money back. What do you mean, get it back? Where from? A fellow who steals from the Bank of England isn't likely to get himself caught. You don't have to lecture me. I may forget a director of the Bank of England. I'll tell you this the robber's a gentleman. You call somebody who steals 55,000 pounds a gentleman. Gentlemen, please. Can we get on with it? Your trick, Mr. Ralph, if I may say so. Oh, sorry. Well, he must be a pretty shrewd man, this thief. Personally, I'm all in favor of his chances. Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's a country on earth that would be safe for him. Oh, I think the world's big enough. It was. Huh? Uh, did you say something, Bob? It was once. Can we play, gentlemen? Once? It was once? <laughs> Do you think the world's getting smaller? <laughs> He's right, you know. A person today could go completely around the world in a matter of six months. Eighty days. I beg your pardon? In eighty days. Oh, God, now, Fogg, you must be joking. We all know there are great improvements in the railways and the steamships, but uh, well, what about... Um, what about shipwrecks and uh, storms and railway disasters and so on and so forth? Included. Sir, or theoretically, I suppose it's possible, but on a practical basis, not a chance. Eighty days. Wrong, sir. Impossible. Eighty. Very well. I would be willing, for my own part, to wager ten thousand pounds that such a journey cannot possibly be made in that time then you would lose sir the devil i would if you think it's possible i defy you to do it sir are you suggesting mr stewart that i should journey around the world in 80 days i am sir be advised then sir that i should like nothing better gentlemen this is really absurd now shall we go on with the game Oh, my dear Stuart, can't you see? This has all just been a bit of amusement. Doesn't really mean it. But I do. Good. At the moment, I have a deposit of um, 30,000 pounds at Baring's Bank. I'm quite willing to risk the entire amount. 30,000? Good heavens. My dear fellow, you could lose the whole lot just by some unforeseen delay. Mr. Flanagan, the unforeseen does not exist. But think of it, sir. You'll be jumping from train to steamer to God knows what until you collapse. No, let's put an end to this right now. It's a very poor joke. A true Englishman, sir, never jests about anything so serious as a wager. If there's anyone else here who lacks my confidence, then please speak up. Eighty days. 1920 hours, or 115,200 minutes. By heavens. Or less. I will match Stuart's wager, Fogg. 10,000 pounds. And I. Very well, then. Now, then, do you think we can carry on? When do you intend to leave? The train to Dover leaves Charing Cross every evening at 9 o'clock. <laughs> you can go this evening? Of course. And I shall return to this very room at nine o'clock in 80 days, or less. My check drawn from Baring's bank will remain here while I'm gone. Look here, Fogg. We don't wish to take advantage, but we're quite willing to suspend this game right now while you go away and uh, make your preparations for the journey. Suspend the game? 
What on earth for? May I remind you, gentlemen, diamonds are trumps. Be so good as to play. the house. Leave, monsieur. At once. Forgive me, monsieur, but did you say leave? Within 20 minutes. Are you taking a trip, monsieur? We are taking the train to Dover. Dover? And around the world. The world? Around the world, monsieur. In 80 days, or less. Uh, I mean, monsieur, are, are we taking any trunk? No trunks, only this carpet bag. Two shirts, two trousers, three pairs of stockings for me. The same for you. We shall purchase whatever we need en route. I trust you have stout shoes. We may do a little walking. And as we leave in 19 minutes, I suggest you pack at once. I'm ready, monsieur. Mm -hmm. My Bradshaws. We'll take 20,000 pounds with us. No. We may as well take the whole lot. Take very good care of this. God, it was my life, monsieur. <laughs> I demand to know why we're not leaving. For 28 years, I've been crossing this channel. Only once in my entire life has there been just one ray of sunshine. And you dare to ask me to put her ashore? Never! No! I tell you, I will not disturb her. Not under any circumstances. May I inquire? I yes. kept her identity a secret from all the other passengers on board. That was her wish. Your passengers from Calais have left the ship. Monsieur, surely you can tell us. Oh, 
I do not believe it. I escorted her myself to our finest cabin, La Celeste. She's going to remain there until she wishes to leave. And then? The port director would have a word with you. Patience, Monsieur Fogg. We will leave. If not today, tomorrow. I take it this woman is someone of importance. Is it possible, Monsieur, that you have never heard of her? The great Sarah Bernhardt? Yes. Bernhardt. The opera? The theater, monsieur. The greatest actress of our time. Of, of anyone's time. The, the divine Sarah Bernard. She is French, of course. Let's just see if we can't budge her, eh? Budge? Budge her, monsieur? Monsieur! No! Thank you, monsieur. Do not disturb her. No. Ah, oh, here we are. Oh. As a Frenchman, I cannot allow you. Don't be ridiculous. Oh. As, a, as a human being, jamais de la vie. Hospital. I am loath to remind you, but you are in my employ. And as long as you remain, so you will do as required. Stand aside. Hello. Oh. Bonjour. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît, la serviette. Vous êtes très aimable. Vous êtes en paix, n'est-ce pas? Uh, yeah, oui. Uh, uh, that is, yes, um, I am English, if... That's what you're asking. Oh, beastly. You have no idea how beastly it is in Paris at this moment. A civil insurrection. They call it the Commune de Paris. I call them communards. Oh, it is so sad. I'm exhausted. Be that as it may, madam, I should appreciate very much your leaving the ship at once. Leave? There's a carriage waiting for you on the dock. But of course. You will be so kind as to pour for me one glass of wine. Huh? You intend to enter France at a time like this, monsieur? My time is of the essence, madam. Monsieur... Make yourself comfortable. Uh, we will discuss the matter. You have a very interesting face, monsieur. A little closer. Ah, oui. The eyes, I think. The curve of the lips. Forgive me, madam, but I am obliged to press on. France, monsieur, will always be there. Mm. You and I, fate has drawn us together. Let us enjoy a quiet afternoon. The two of us. Terribly sorry. Ah, why must you be so English? What is this obligation that keeps you pressing on? I am going around the world, madam. The world? Indeed. Then you must certainly have all the time in the world. Eighty days. Monsieur? I have made a wager. 
80 days, not a second more. What a dreadful prospect. Perhaps now you may understand my urgency in leaving Dover as quickly as possible. I understand nothing, monsieur. Nothing except... Oh, merveilleux. Oh, indeed, curved lips. What a pity. What a waste. I shall never understand the English. to know uh, if the criminal should turn up here, would the Italian government be prepared to hold him for extradition? No, signor. I have told you before. It's impossible. You have no complete description of the man. You have nothing. Niente. Not even a bar. Oh, no, well, all I want to know is that we'll get your cooperation whenever he arrives in Brindy. Uh, you say Brindy? Where are we are now? I know, I said that. I will telegraph for the warrant. How do you know he was shot? Oh, I know. He may be clever, he may be fiendishly clever, but the time will come when he will realise that the detective fix is always one jump ahead of him. Where do you think he is? Grant? I'm today? No. He'd be mad, wouldn't he? I mean, even the most stupid of bank robbers wouldn't think of crossing France today, you know. One thing's for sure, he's not in France. <laughs> to read. A little respect, please. Now then, I think we've given you all the information that we have at present. Mr. Phileas Fogg, one of our revered members, has undertaken a journey that, well, apparently it has captured the imagination of all London. We have posted the odds for the benefit of our members. As we'll observe, they are currently 20 to 1 against the gentleman. Where is he now? We have here what we call a fog log. <laughs> a red line will trace each and every confirmed portion of the trip. We have him confirmed now only to Dover. Gentlemen, we must all agree that Mr. Fogg hasn't a chance. However, if this amazing feat can ever one day be accomplished, then by heaven let it be done by an Englishman. <laughs> Come on, step forward. No one's going to bite you? Yes, sir. I understand you have some important information for us. He was there. I saw him. In the bank, when he took the notes. 
Saw whom? Him. Fog. The man in the paper. Fog? Saw his picture in the stand. Oh, it was him, all right. The one who's going around the world. Phileas Fogg? The gentleman from the Reform Club? Himself. I'd swear to it. I thought I'd better tell you. Fogg? Oh, by heaven, sir, it's beginning to pull together. A so-called gentleman takes 55,000 pounds from the Bank of England. And then, uh, on the pretext of a wager, he goes off around the world in order to elude the police. I want a photograph of Fogg sent to every detective in the field. Yeah, at once, sir. Oh, by God, the man's clever. He's probably now looking for some sunny villa in the Mediterranean to spend the rest of his life in luxury. <laughs> understand, monsieur. We are behind schedule and we sit here in a cafe. We are here. We are? Experience has taught me the most reliable information one can receive in any city always comes from the local bar. Tell them we can afford any transportation available that will get us out of France. Put forth the urgency of it with um, something for his trouble. I will try, monsieur. Merci. Bonjour, monsieur. Puis-je m'asseoir avec vous? Forgive me, madam. I speak not a word of French. Mais vous êtes si belle. Je crois que je vous plairai beaucoup. Mais vous ne me croyez pas assez bien pour vous. Vous m'insultez. If you don't mind, madam, I prefer to be alone. Alone. Oh you insult her. Not at all. You'll give her 20 francs for your insolence. Not one franc, sir. Out of the question. So. Pardon, monsieur. I am the servant of this gentleman here. May I inquire why you struck him? Sir, I can't help thinking there's some misunderstanding here. Fifty francs. Fifty! <laughs> Just we leave immediately. You spoke to the barman about our transportation? Oh, what? Very well, then. Oh. Thank you quickly, huh? Thank you, sir. I must say, however, you can tell leave a great deal to be desired. And what did he say? He said there is no way out. I beg your pardon. There is no transportation in or out of the city. Nothing. Nothing, monsieur. Steady. Steady, old chap. Well, we shall simply have to think of something, that's all. We 
call me, my man. She told me to find nice, quiet employment in a nice, quiet house with a nice, quiet gentleman. Admittedly, this can be quite difficult at times, but uh, I must say, uh, I say this with all due modesty, I'm a master of the art. I'm afraid my English is not very good, but uh, we try. Are you a physician? I'm not a practicing physician, no. But uh, I'm in medical research. A bullet grazed his head. Will he be all right? A mild concussion, nothing very serious, I would think. Uh, what brings you to Paris, then? Simply en route. Around the world. A circumference of the globe in 80 days. 80 days? Or less. Oh, I must see the best Yes, well, I admit that we seem to be getting off to a most irregular start in your country. Why would anyone even attend such a thing? A wager, sir. And my word of honor. A wager, monsieur, is a matter of money, that's all. But I do fear for your honor. Monsieur. Do you believe in fate? No, I can't really say I do. Why? I may be the instrument of your deliverance. Forgive me, uh, could you be a little more precise? A colleague of mine, a man of scientific genius, has been working on a device that will operate on illuminating gas with enormous power. You mean something capable of transporting people? That is the purpose. A four-stroke engine attached to a most remarkable vehicle. You may have the privilege of making the first test of it. You mean it's never been tested before? Uh, no. Uh, why not? Frankly, there have been no volunteers. Oh. It is experimental, but it will give you the swift transport you are looking for. He lives in Paris? Just outside. Prefer. Not very far. His name is Lenoir. If you like, I would give you directions. Oh, please do. Uh, who shall I say sent me? Pasteur. Louis Pasteur. Au secours! Au secours! Where am I? Are you all right? Yes, this man.
Monsieur Lenoir? Oui. Oh. Oh, forgive me. I, uh... Can I help you? Uh... I'm interested in your, uh, four-stroke engine. Yeah. Perhaps, monsieur, you can, uh, uh, wait a moment. I'm occupied. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Mm. <laughs> well, let's have a look around the place. Each valve has a four-stroke cycle. Simply amazing. And what is that? Hmm? And this? Some sort of tubing. Hmm. Curious. Look, monsieur. The tube is attached to the carpet. Casper, too. Oui? I'm now beginning to understand what this is all about. Vente de voleur! He says we're thieves. Attendez! Ne tirez pas! What did you tell him? I told him not to shoot. Oh. You will steal from me, will you? No such intention, I assure you. Uh, we were sent here by a friend of yours. Who? Pasteur. Uh, yes, uh, Louis Pasteur. Uh, uh, pardon, excusez-moi. Bien là. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, he said uh, you might wish a test of your um, what do you call this? Le nuage de pourpre. Hmm? Le nuage de pourpre. He said le nuage de pourpre. Yes. Hmm? The purple cloud. Cloud. How far do you think it might take us? As far as you want to go. The Mediterranean? But of course! You want to see it? Come and see it. Go on. Be careful here. attaches to this cabin? Exactly, monsieur. Here. Ah. I have had many discussions with Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin. Zeppelin? A German. Of course, we could never agree. So I've gone ahead without him, with my own Lenoir engine. Forgive me, monsieur. Am I to understand, does this thing go up in the air like a balloon? A balloon? You wish to insult me. What good is a balloon? You cannot control a balloon. A balloon is sticking by the wings. 
It will go where it wants to go, not where you want to go. Maybe we should think about it first. Here, here, in the Nuage de Pourpre, you can fly to the end of the Earth. It will be always at your command. Uh, sir, I would not deceive you. It's urgent that we leave France as quickly as possible. Here is my card. I am a member of the Reform Club, and I can promise you this. Should you allow us a test of this airship, I shall send a detailed account of the voyage to the Royal Geographic Society and give you all the credit for whatever success we have. We are in agreement, monsieur. <laughs> Why have you never tested the Purple Cloud yourself? <laughs> It's a good question. Well, it's quite simple. You see, a mind such as this, uh, if you forgive me, uh, a mind of a scientific genius, well, it must be protected at any cost for the, for the benefit of mankind. It means it isn't safe. Oh, well done. <coughs> marvelous, ah. marvelous. Very good indeed. Very good. Now, okay. 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 Sure. it works. Very good. Huh? Very good.
what is it? She. Who? Oh. I believe I fell asleep. Madam. I do not wish to seem inhospitable, but you have placed us in a very precarious position. Precarious? What is this precarious? Oh, I love to travel. Wait. Wait? Any additional weight will put us in jeopardy. The Alps. You mean we cannot clear the Alps? The risk we shouldn't have to face. He is correct, madame. It seems a pity to lose such charming company, but I fear we must drop you off. Drop you off? Impossible, Passport 2. Say something. Press on. simple, really. Elementary. You know what is wrong? Basic. It's only a matter of fuel consumption. We are out of fuel. Mm. I'm afraid Lenoir's projection was far off the mark. I must make a note of that for the journal. My God! We are out of fuel. Yes, quite right. We are lost. We are finished. We are stranded. We are shipwrecked on the Alps. We are going to die. Fog is a vanishing man. He cannot hide forever. And you have checked the same places day after day, time after time. Routine makes a great detective. It's been my whole life, you know, routine. Oh, uh... It's not my whole life, no. My whole life is, uh, my Millie. Who's Millie? Oh, my man. Mildred Hapsworth. We're going to get married on the reward money. Yeah, she built a little house near Maidstone. My sympathies. It's very nice of you, I'm sure, yes, yes. Of course, it's been a bit of pill for me to swallow, you know, and I, I don't really believe it. What? I don't believe he's still in France. I don't think any commune de Paris is fit to hold a man like that, you know. I think he's off and running somewhere else. And confounded. Yes, confounded. Come on. Stop now, please. I'm sorry. I know. If I could only lay my hands on him just once, you know. He's quiet. I'll feel better. If you don't mind, I'm freezing. Could I open the brandy?
brandy, please. You want some more? I want the bottle. The whole bottle, monsieur? Yes. If I may suggest, monsieur, I think we should make it last as long as possible. Fetch me the bottle. What? What are, what are you going to do? Monsieur! No! Oh, my God! Gone! All of it gone! Brandy left. It is crazy. Why have you done this, monsieur? We are sitting on top of an alp with no brandy left. <laughs> Oh, 
Are you all right, monsieur? No, uh, quite. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well done, sir. Well done. Buongiorno, signore. Passaporto, per favore. Oh, yes, of course, my passport. Uh, here you are. Siete inglesi? English? Yes. Do you have anything to declare? Uh, well, not a thing, actually. You see, we've just had a most delightful trip in this marvelous airship. And I should like you to take this record of our journey and see that it reaches the Royal Geographic Society in London. I must inform you that you have desecrated a national monument. Oh, terribly sorry. Now then, could you direct us to the rail station? I must place you under arrest. How many are you? Two. Uh, we have a guest inside, but she's having a bite of lunch at the moment. A woman? just got off the train. Oh, sir, surely there must be some sort of accommodation available. Every cabin we have for Bombay is a book. Unless... Yes? You are willing to share a state room. With whom? Egyptian stonesmiths. Seven. Seven? Monsieur, in one state room, nine of us? That would be quite satisfactory. Your uh, ship, the Mongolia, is leaving in 15 minutes. Very good. Good day, sir. What's that man's name? Sorry. The Englishman who just booked on the Mongolia. I cannot reveal the names of our passengers. Right. Have you seen one of these before? Fitz. Detective Wilbur Fitz on duty. Uh, uh, Fogg. Phileas Fogg. You've got to stop him. The ship is ready to leave, signore. Well, then, how's the ship? It is the property of the Peninsula and Oriental Company. We have not the authority to stop it for any reason whatsoever. Well, then, book me a passage on it. I'm sorry, Signor. Full up. But do you know what this is? An international criminal? Nothing at all, Signore. Unless you are willing to share a space with a Turk. What's a Turk? Uh, well, never mind what a Turk. Get me on that boat. I want to send a telegraphic dispatch to England. I will take it, Signore. For them to send out a warrant for this man's arrest. Out to Suez. Uh, say, to 600 lire, please. For the dispatch? And the steamship ticket. Oh, both together? Oh, that's quite reasonable. <laughs> well, uh, out 600. Well, but you can keep the chance. Oh, Grazie, Signore. You better hurry now. Yes. Okay. Right.
Anything you need, sir? Do not hesitate to call. will take a trick. Understand? <laughs> Excuse me, Sir Forbes. Uh, the fog situation. Well? Our charge d'affaires tells me that a Mr. Phileas Fogg has landed somewhere in Italy. How did he do that? Well, it's an extraordinary thing, sir. It seems he emerged from a rather large purple object. What are you driveling about? It seems he emerged from a rather large purple object seen in the sky by thousands of Italians all over Italy. Well, never mind all that now. I want a warrant for Fogg's arrest sent to our detective in Brindisi. <laughs> Hicks! Hicks! Well, whatever. We regret we must leave you now, Mr. Fogg. It is written, to part with a friend is to leave part of oneself behind. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It was lovely to meet you. <laughs> Name's Carmody, Chief Surveyor, Calcutta. Anything you need to know about Inja, I'm your man. Phileas Fogg. Very decent of you. Mind you, one thing our Indian chappies can't do is make a decent brandy. French? Nothing else will do. Mind you, I tried a Bombay brandy once. By Jove, turn me scarlet. Lit up. They can see me for 20 miles distant. Get <laughs> out <laughs> Oh, Judy, would you be going ashore here in Suez? No. Why? Oh, it's a fascinating city. I'd like to show you around it, really. Some other time, eh? So, obviously, this is not your final destination. No, no. Uh, where are you going to from here, if I may ask? Uh, around the world. <laughs> in 80 days. <laughs> A wager of uh, some kind. A wager? You're sure there's not more to it than that? What do you mean? No, I don't mean anything. There's just some marvellous shops here. You know, if there's anything you want to buy, I'd help you. Shirts. Uh, we need more shirts. Shirts? We left so quickly. Didn't bring anything but a carpet bag. Oh, you left in a hurry, did you? How long have you been in the service of the gentleman, if I may ask? Only a few days. He's a very wealthy gentleman, isn't he? It is not for me to inquire that of Mr. Fogg, monsieur, if you will excuse me. 
Oh, dear God, it's her. There's no question. No question about it. What? It's Madame Sarah Bernhardt. Good heaven. She's not coming in here. A woman in the reform club. She wouldn't dare. Excuse me, madam. Bonjour, monsieur. How thrilling it is to be here among such distinguished company. <coughs> and so I thought you should know that I was fortunate enough to spend many, many bewitching hours with your brave Mr. Falk in my stateroom on the channel boat. We shared moments I shall never forget. He begged me to go around the world with him, but um, my schedule simply would not permit. Madame, do you think he will succeed? Oh, gentlemen, I have never known a man with more determination than Phileas Fogg. I call him Phileas. I am convinced uh, that absolutely nothing will stand in his way. And that is why I am here, to place a wager. 20,000 pounds. But, but, madame, that will change the present odds considerably. My confidence is unshakable. Any man who is capable of entering a woman's chamber and then not... <coughs> Gentlemen, a toast to my adorable, enchanting Phileas Fogg. <laughs> Stay here in Bombay. No, we're living straight away for the rail station. Yeah. I'll cut express leaving uh, the scene. Oh, 42 minutes. Hi, George. I'm taking the same thing. Shall we share the pen? That's right. That's right now. Thank you. Um, have you looked everywhere? Are you absolutely positive? We have nothing. As I told you, I sent them a. A wire from Suez. And I'm telling you, no warrant was sent to this department. Well, an issue one. On whose authority? On my authority. Refuse. Can't you understand plain English? He's at the railway station at this moment. I must get there. I must get a warrant. If and when this warrant arrives in Bombay, we shall be happy to assist you. It will be too late. L A E whatever it is. Look, I've come such a long way for this. I've got so close. Oh, my condolences.
I say? What's the meaning of this? Why have we stopped? End of the line. Here, in the middle of nowhere? We still have 50 miles of track to lay down between here and Allahabad, where the line begins again. You will have to find your own transportation to Allahabad. Really? How curious. They call this train the Calcutta Express? It will be, Sahab, when the track is put in. No, 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 get away, get away. Did you touch it? No. Well, it's a chuggy goddess of death. They say it brings one frightfully bad luck. Chuggy? Yes, yeah, we're entering chuggy country now. They used to strangle their victims in honor of the goddess. What happens? Not anymore, I trust. No, the British government has stopped their attempt. That's for two. Uh, Monsieur, Abia. Isn't he beautiful? His name is Kiyuni. He's not for hire, but you can buy him for only six pounds. And they were throwing the guy for nothing. Buy him? Buy him? What on earth would I do with an Indian elephant? Ridiculous. I say, Bob, what would be decent of you to give me a lift like this? Then he doesn't know. Well, can't he get the beast moving again? I hit the beetle. I hit the beetle. What is it, do you think? Heaven the fog is for him. Yes, we move on. No. I beg your pardon. We must save her. Save the woman, Mr. Fogg? I still have 12 hours to spare. I can devote them to that. My dear fellow, what you suggest is totally impossible. We must save this young woman. Monsieur, 
Is it possible you are a man of heart after all? I do, Dr. Casper, too. Everywhere. We must get to her first. It's impossible. The place is surrounded by guards. So where's our chance? Let's 
Francis. But I think Pass for Two deserves our applause. Of course, of course. Have a brandy. French, you know. Oh, merci. She, monsieur. A little groggy, I fear. What are we going to do with her? If we leave her here now, she's bound to fall into the hands of her execution as a girl. We shall take her to Calcutta. I suppose there's really no other course. is yours. Master, you really mean that I can keep him? For your devoted service. But he's worth a fortune. Indeed. Treat him well. Farewell, Master. Farewell. Browse through this. The writings of a poet king, Ukaf Udwal. You might find it a bit more stimulating than your maps and time schedules. Fear yeah, that poetry has never appealed to me. Speak English? Yes. Who are you? The name is Phileas Fogg. This gentleman is Sir Francis Comati. The man next to you there is my man, Passepartout. I don't understand. How were you able to... Rather long story. Tedious at times and hopelessly complicated. The important thing is that you're safe now. We're on a train to Calcutta. You know, um, no need for that. Um. They were going to kill me. Yes, I know. Uh, we were able to prevent it. How can I ever thank you? Well, in point of fact, uh, my servant here pulled it off. He's French, but uh, very resourceful all the same. Oh. That's it. I'll try and get a little more sleep. But only, um, you see, oh, 21 hours, 39 minutes from Calcutta. I feel so very tired. Of course you do. 
breakfast. Lie back and close your eyes. Sir. The shining tresses divided into two parts encircle the harmonious contour of her delicate cheeks, brilliant in their glow and freshness. chance of any relatives here in Calcutta? No. Uh, might we have one moment, please? Frankly, Paul, this is a bit of a sticky wicket. Yeah. What? The girl. Oh. I tell you, with these fanatical people, she's not really safe anywhere in India. They'll find a way to steal her back, believe me. There must be someone here who can help her? Yes, exactly. You. I mean to say, you ask for the responsibility. But don't despair. Life is full of strange twists. Yeah. I want you to have this. My parting gift. Oh, thank you. Stout heart. Goodbye, Fogg. See you about. Yes, goodbye. Monsieur, she says she has a Parsi in Anka. I beg your pardon? A Parsi as I am. A Parsi uncle. Oh, marvelous. That happens to be our next destination. Oh, 7.35. We have from now until noon to catch the Hong Kong steamer. We shall journey there together. Rangoon, where she headed for? Hong Kong, via Rangoon and Singapore. Cook me cabin. There is nothing left, Sahib. His Serene Highness, Bayu Yang of Burma, will be aboard with many of his servants. You mean he's taken over the whole bloody ship? All but four cabins, and they're also taken. Oh, where is he? I'll have a word with him. Sir, His Serene Highness is the direct descendant of King Tavan Shwati of the Tongu dynasty, and he is the half brother of the present ruler, King Minden. Well, my mother's Daisy Fix. What of it? To have an audience with His Highness requires weeks of preparation. And you must first.
Welcome aboard, sir. Yes, uh, but um, this is the dining room. It's reserved, Sahib, for His Serene Highness. You must come this way, please. Here we are. My father, he was a merchant in Bombay. When he died, I was forced to marry the Raja. He's somewhat older than you, I take it. He was 84 and cool. I tried to escape once, but I had no one to help me. So I jumped into the river. You? Oh, yes, from the rooftop one night. Good heavens. I swam to the opposite bank, but they were there waiting, his guards. Extraordinary. I come from a proud and noble family, Mr. Fogg. I weep now when I think that most of them are gone. But you do have this relative in Hong Kong. Yes, he left Bombay before my father died. It's many years since we have set eyes on each other. He'll be delighted to see you again, I'm certain. Rest assured, I shall place you in his care before we say goodbye. Ah, well, I suppose we should retire. I'll see you at breakfast then. Precisely nine, shall we say? Good night, Mr. Fogg. If you wish. That is, um, you may call me Phileas. Roll 
Hold it. Ruffians intend to hold the prince for ransom. Have the banknotes? Hidden down here, monsieur. Drop one. Monsieur? Drop one now, every five minutes. But do as I say. Apologies, gentlemen. We speak English. Five languages. And in each, I would beg the pardon of you and the young lady. Well, not to worry. Couldn't be helped. Kayo Keys, the leader of this band of cutthroats, had brought me here to hold me for ransom. Kayo Keys? His very name is strike terror into hearts of my people. Well, monsieur, I, I'm certain, of course, that the ransom will be paid. No. Huh? Burma is ruled by my brother, who will mourn my passing, but refuse to pay ransom on principle. No. I'll be put to death. As you. As we? I have hardly enough time. Excuse me. Time for what? To prepare myself for death.
queen of the royal princess. I am pleased. I am very pleased. I shall make you one of my wives. I say, how do you... <laughs> Easy, monsieur, huh? Slowly. They will come to sunrise tomorrow. Who? The guards. They'll come for you first, Mr. Fogg. You will be shot and given to Natawatwa. Not a wahwa. A bear, Mr. Fogg. A Burmese bear. A devil beast who must be fed. Oh, think of it, monsieur. To end here, now, in the belly of a bear. There is something you should know before we part. Yes. I have found your service altogether satisfactory, and I would recommend you to anyone. You would? Without hesitation. Oh, monsieur. Coming from you, that is a great compliment. Goodbye, monsieur. Goodbye, Mr. Fogg. I'll pray for you. Monsieur. Farewell.
Oh. Are you all right? Yes. Thank God. Oh. See here. None of that now. I... I, uh, I agree it's been rather nip and tuck for a while, but our British troops have arrived. God save the Queen. All of them. We. Oh. Um. I believe these are yours. Ah, then you did find the notes. One of my men spotted a fiver on the road, and then another. By the time we reached the woods, I knew we were onto something. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. I believe this is yours. I would like you to be a guest at my palace. You and your friends are welcome to stay as long as you wish. I'll see to your every desire. It's too kind of you. Although I have lost over six precious days, and hopeless as it may seem, I must press on. Tell me, Mr. Fogg, if you should leave for Rangoon immediately. Uh, I fear it will take me another ten days from Rangoon to Hong Kong, but I have no other choice. You do, Mr. Fogg. I shall see to it that you arrive in time. The distance across Burma by land is one-third of that by sea. Yes, but there aren't any roads. Mr. Fogg, you have not only delivered me from the scourge of Kayo Keys, you have delivered my people as well. I give you my word that you shall arrive in Hong Kong on your schedule. But not in those tattered clothes. <laughs> <laughs> 